Hey guys, my name's Alex Wise and today I'm going to demonstrate how I use steel wool for my long exposure photographs. Look, to be honest, it's not really rocket science and I didn't come up with this concept myself. It's been demonstrated really well by other photographers that I'll link to in the description of this video. But I just wanted to show you how I used it and the processing that I use for my photos. Before we go any further, it's really important to touch on the safety precautions of using steel wool for long exposure photography. It's not something I just do in shorts and t-shirts, the sparks do hurt as I well know after copying a few of my ankles. But anyway, start off by wearing some long sleeves, such as a hoodie, because this way you can protect your hair while you're at it. So, plug it up and put a hoodie over your head. And I'd also recommend getting some gloves. I'm gonna quickly put some on. Ah, oh, there's actually people in the street watching me do this. This is awkward. <laughs> and, yep, so I'm just putting on my gloves. And these are my gloves, hot to trot. But also what I'd also recommend is getting some protective eyewear, maybe some of those kind of plastic ones that woodworkers use, or just wearing your normal optical glasses just over your eyes. Um, also, it wouldn't hurt to wear some jeans because you don't want it sparking up on your legs. Why have I still got these gloves on? I'll never know. But yeah, just be really careful in that regard. Another thing I'd also like to add is pick your scene carefully. You don't really want to go somewhere that's been dry for ages, especially if you've just come out of the summer period. Instead, aim for somewhere quite moist, maybe around a beach or something like that. If you are going somewhere dry, take some water and possibly an extinguisher of some sort. You don't want to create a fire, but yeah, just be careful and use your head. So start off by buying some steel wool. No shit. Um, basically it comes in various grades from quadruple zero to grade three. The grade three is more of a coarser steel wool, while the quadruple zero is more of a super fine. Basically what this means is that the quadruple zero super fine one will burn a lot more freely as it's more thinner, as opposed to the grade three which is coarser and won't burn as well. This is pretty much available in any major hardware store, so just go in and buy a few packets because if you're like me, you will need a few because it took me a few attempts to get it right. Next on the shopping list is a whisk. No, we're not actually whisking eggs, we're actually going to use it to put the steel wool in. I'll quickly show you what I mean by this, one sec. So you grab your steel wool, just pump it out a bit to aerate it, and then put it in. Be careful though that it's not going to flip out when you spin it around in circles. Okay, so that's pretty snug. And next on the list is buying a little chain. I actually use a chain that I use to secure my camera when I'm taking long exposure photographs on overpasses. But you might even be able to use a dog leash or something similar. Just hook it onto the end of the leash. Like so. And you're pretty much set. And then what you can do in your photographs is just spin it around like so. So the best time to take steel wool photographs is on blue hour. This is just after sunset where the light's getting dark but also remains a bit of colour in the sky. I personally like this Photix remote that I use. Basically it lets me set the exposure time to whatever I want, whether it's 30 seconds or 5 minutes. You might want to just pick up a cheapie on eBay. You can get like ones for $5 or so. They just let you switch on the camera or switch off. But it doesn't really matter. But try to aim to take your photos in the way. I'll put up some after this video to give you a bit of understanding of the difference and why it matters. <laughs> Just before I finish up, I thought I'd show you this poster that's in the background for all the videos. It's pretty inspirational and I'll link to where I got it in the description field. Anyway, if you have any questions about this video, be sure to drop a line and I'll be happy to help. Thanks for watching.